Welcome to the Purple Mash webinar on pupils as digital publishers. In this webinar, we're going to look at how your pupils can create and publish with Purple Mash using a variety of formats that can be shared across the school with parents and with your community. Let's first of all have a look at the English Topics button from the home page here. And in this English Topics, you have a number of different tools that will support the children in getting writing. And you have underneath there some resources related to different writing genres and themes. For example, letter writing, persuasive writing, traditional tales, superheroes, etc. You have some printable resources and then further resources at the bottom there. I'm going to scroll back up and go to this planning and drafting button. These are a range of resources which will get the children planning their writing. You have some writing templates where the children can write their plan using a, a basic storyboard. Some printable resources as well that you can use offline. Or you can use the built-in tools, for example, to connect. So I'm going to launch this app. And there is, for example, a story planner in here. It's a pre-made template. And I can write, I might be retelling the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Let's change the note of that to red. And I can add in my main characters. Now, this particular tool can be collaborative. If I click on this button at the top here, I can save it into a shared folder, such as a class folder, and all of the children in that class could log in, find this particular piece of work in the class folder, and they could add their own information to this plan, and it would all appear at the same time on each other's screens. It's a brilliant tool. If you click on the video button at the top here, it will guide you on how to use the different features of this tool. It's brilliant for planning. Um, and how to use it in a collaborative way. The other tools in the planning and drafting section here are to write, which is again another collaborative um, writing tool where the children can write together. They're all assigned a different color and it's a brilliant tool for planning. You have to chart, which creates flow charts and diagrams if again you want to do more planning with your writing. Let's go back to the English tools and I'm going to explore these three particular tools. To publish are some blank writing templates with different formats here. I'm going to use this one for example, pictures and text. And I'm going to very quickly write something about an animal. Now I could use my clip art here and there are hundreds of different clip art items built in. So I could drag and drop my animal across here or I could use my upload image button here and I'm going to choose a picture of a koala. There's my koala that I'm going to write about. There's my story. I'm going to save that in the My Work folder. I'm going to call it the Koala. I'm going to overwrite that file because I created, created one earlier. So let's come out of that and go and have a look at To Publish Plus. To Publish Plus, again, are a selection of blank writing templates slightly for slightly older children. For example, the leaflet. If I select the leaflet here, I can flip this out flip it round and again I can use the clip art or I can upload some images on that I have saved away onto my computer. And you have this writing checklist on the left hand side which is essentially a success criteria for the children to think about when they've completed their piece of writing. So now we're going to go back to the English tools and have a look at To Create a Story which is one of my favourite tools. There are two versions of this, my simple story where children can draw a picture, write a text at the bottom and then animate the picture, or my story which enables the children to add backgrounds, sounds, animation. Now I'm going to choose a background and I could draw a background in here or use my clip art and there are some pre-made built-in images here. I'm going to write a story about the Great Fire of London using that background. So I've clicked OK to set my background and I'm going to add some flames, burning London. Now whatever I draw over the top, when I then select this animation button at the top here, I can select and preview different kinds of animation. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to write my story. Now again, I can add some sounds to this and there are some pre-made sounds. You can also record your own sounds here using the built-in microphone or you can use some of the other sounds that are built in here. Now when I press play to preview my work, you can hear the sound and watch the animation. Let's now go back to the home page 
and explore the topics area which is on the bottom right here. Now in the topics area if I scroll down you will see around about a hundred different topic areas. All of these topic areas have within them different writing templates, publishing formats etc. Now I'm going to scroll across to the Vikings area and I'm going to do some writing using the built-in pre-made writing projects in the Vikings area. So as you can see when I scroll across there are different genres here. There's a news report, this one is an information text about long ships, again another different form of news report, writing about Viking family life etc. You also have a leaflet at the bottom here, leaflets are very popular, and at the bottom we have a purple mash mash cam where children can explore the character of being a Viking before they get into their writing. So first of all I'm going to pick one of these uh, news reports and I'm going to launch this app. Now I'm going to be a reporter and I've been asked to write the story of a recent Viking landing. Now all of these writing templates have similar features. You have image boxes here with pre-made images already there for you so I could choose a, uh, an image there and pop that in there. I can then drag and drop some clip art put in a long ship at the back there and I have some prompts for the writing which I scroll across on the left hand side so when I click inside a text box position my cursor there have a look at this button what happened imagine you were at the scene what did you see if I click on that button it pops in a little sentence starter which begins to answer that those questions now I'm going to save this first of all in my folder and I'm now going to use my globe icon up here to share this with the children and set it as a to-do. So this is a teacher feature only and I'm going to give this a title that the children will see. I could give it some audio instructions, I'll give it a set date, might be for today's lesson. I might give them a week to complete this piece of work. They can complete that at home or at school. I'm going to then assign it to the class that I'm working with. You can also differentiate your to-dos if you wanted just to um, assign it to one or two children. But let's assign it to the whole of class three. Now that to-do is now being set for the whole of class three to complete. Now I'm going to use the admin cog at the top here. I can use this impersonate pupil login feature here. And I'm going to pretend to be Abigail from class three as I've just set the to-do for her class. And you'll notice Abigail has an alert here telling her she has a piece of work to complete. So if she can either click the go to button here or click the tick and click start. So I'm going to pretend to be Abigail and do the piece of work and I'm going to write, do all my writing etc. Now I'm actually going to um, press the save button and it automatically saves the piece of work that Abigail has done with her name as the file name. Now before she goes out of there I'm going to actually open one up that she's done before. So this is one that she pre-created before. So if she clicks on the share button now she can share it with her friends in her class or she can share it with her parents or the wider community. So first of all I'm going to click this share button which enables her to share it to a display board and here is a Vikings display board that I created as a teacher earlier. And I'm going to click on that and it's now been shared to that display board and you'll notice it's greyed out. Let's come out of there. Now when she comes out of this you'll notice Abigail has a couple of options when she's doing the to-do. She can continue working, she's got seven days to complete that or she can hand it in and leave a little message, private message between herself and the teacher. Now I'm going to go back to being the teacher and you'll notice that I've got an alert now telling me so that some work has been handed in and that she's also sent, sent it to the display board ready for me to approve. So I could either click that go to button or I can click on the sharing button at the top here, the sharing tab. Let's go to the display board and see the piece of work that Abigail sent. Any work that gets sent to a display board or a blog has to be approved by a teacher in order for it to be visible. So I'm going to click on the edit button, click down to the unapproved items. Here is the piece of work waiting to be approved. Now I'll click the pencil and I can preview the work in the left hand side. I can leave a little a message here. Well done and I can click the approved button. Now if I have a number of these to approve I can click the save changes and next and very quickly approve them all at once. So there we are if I turn the edit button off everyone will be able to now see that piece of work that Abigail has completed and I click on that 
and there is the piece of work that I can also print directly from the work preview. So that's one way to share the work that the children have completed. The other way is to use the blog. So if I click on the sharing icon there again and go to the blogs, here is my Viking blog. Now you'll notice I already put a piece of work up here. This is a, a mash cam, the Viking mash cam that I created earlier. There I am. I am a vicious Viking. Let me show you how the children will do that. So if they're opening up a piece of work, I go to the work tab and I open up my Viking character here. Here's the piece of work that I've created. Again, they can use the globe icon and use this button at the right hand side that says blog about your work. Here's the pre-created blog that the teacher has created earlier. You write in your title there, you can write in a summary, and again you can write in the body of the blog. So you can very quickly pop in a little question there. Let's again pretend to be one of the pupils. I'm going to pretend again to be Abigail. And I'm going to go to that sharing tab at the top there. This time I'm going to look at the blog. Here's my Vikings blog. And I'm going to click on this and look at the piece of work that was sent by another child. And I'm going to very quickly, as Abigail, I'm going to leave a comment. And she can post that. Now, as you can see at the bottom there, that comment has not been approved by a teacher. So for that to be live and for other children to see that comment, a teacher would have to approve that comment. So I'm going to come out of there and go back to being the teacher and go back to the blog. Here is the Viking blog. Let's click on this character. There is the non-approved comment at the bottom there. If I click the edit button, you can very easily see it's a bright red button that says unapproved. If I click on that and make it green and approve it, then other children will be able to see that comment. So for obvious reasons, anything that a child posts to either a display board or to a blog has to be approved by a teacher before that goes live for other children to see it. Lastly, let me show you how as a teacher you can create a display board and a blog. So first of all I'm going to click on the admin cog and here you have manage blogs and manage display boards. If you want to create a new display board you click on this green plus here and you give it a title. Let's call this one Great Fire of London and by default the pupil's name is hidden. You can deselect that if you want to. You can choose an icon for this one here. Let's look for a fire. There we go. Now, there are a number of different options here in terms of the access. If you would like only staff to be able to send work to it, then select that checkbox. If you would like this display board to be visible to the public, you select this checkbox here, visible to the public, and then you are able to get the embed code, the URL, and the QR code. The embed code is then available to you to copy and to paste into your website if you wanted to share this display board with the wider community. The same is true of creating a blog. If I go to the admin cog and click manage blogs, I can again add a new blog in here, add a new icon, etc. I can decide who is going to see this display board, who's going to be able to comment on it, and who can post work onto it. Now, once I've saved that display board, this checkbox here, visible to the public, I can select that if I want to post it onto my website and I can then get the embed code, the QR code and the public URL for that particular blog. So there you have it, lots of different ways that you can use the Purple Mash tools and resources to get your children publishing and sharing their work on display boards and blogging about their work, sharing it with their friends in their class or with the school and the wider community. I hope you found this webinar useful.